morning, Glory. Welcome to Lisa Ann Can. I'm Lisa Ann. This morning I'm headed back out to the garden to pick a few items, whatever I find to be ready. But I know I have a load, or maybe I should say a pack, of jalapeno peppers. So I'm going to go pick the last of the peppers, and today I'm going to show you how we pickle jalapeno peppers. So if you're interested, follow along. Every day I go out and harvest just a handful of things, and it doesn't seem like much, but when I add to them the things that I keep in my refrigerator from every two to three days, it ends up being quite a bounty from week to week with plenty to preserve for the winter. Okay, let's get started pickling jalapeno peppers. I've washed and drained my peppers. I have my cutting board. And I have my jars. So I brought this Classico spaghetti sauce because these jars make great pickling jars. They're heavy duty, the lids are reusable, and I highly recommend them. Okay, so we start by topping the stem off the pepper. And I like to start from the small end. All you're doing is slicing. say again these peppers are not very hot so I'm not wearing gloves but it is a good idea to wear gloves when you're processing peppers because they do burn your skin and you will eventually touch your eye and you'll never forget it so I have my funnel it just makes it easy to drop them down in there move the top And toss them in. You don't have to worry about the seeds. They're fine. I do try to choose the smaller peppers because I like to use the big ones for stuffing. So I have my dish towel here. What I like to do is give it a bump to get some of the air space out so I have room for more. Push down a little and get a few more in there. I want about half an inch at least at the top that's free. So set that aside and start on the next. Right, and that's good. We're ready for the next step. This goes to compost. 
Next step is to fill up the jar with plain white vinegar. Put a little extra in each jar. The next thing that you do is pour the vinegar into the pan on the stove. I use a small tea strainer just to strain out excess seeds. Put that on hot and bring it to a good rolling boil. Okay, we're boiling. Seal it finger tight. I give it a flip upside down to heat the lid. And that's all there is to it. It'll take them a few weeks to cure and they're ready to use. Um, we use ours on chili in the wintertime or nachos or anything that you like hot. And then we use the vinegar sauce to put on our collard and turnip and mustard greens. And it's that easy. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you try it. Today, as I was working in my garden and uh, thinking about my small garden and thinking about my small daily harvest, um, I, a lot of people will despise small beginnings or won't even try if they can't do something on a grand scale. So of course it always makes me think about particular Bible verses and um, if you'll stay with me a few more minutes, we'll take a look in the scripture and see what God's word has to say. I'm just gonna jump right in to Zechariah chapter four and verses nine and 10. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? This scripture is in reference to Israel building their second temple, which was much smaller than the first and a lot less glorious. It was a small thing but God encouraged them not to despise the day of small things. So that's what I was thinking of when I was thinking of my little garden and my small garden harvest. Many years ago, about 20, um, we lived in Wisconsin and I had a little garden and I called it my postage stamp garden because it was quite small and um, I always dreamed of having bigger property and more land and a larger garden, which I did get later. Um, but at the time I was using conventional growing methods, uh, or non-organic fertilizers, um, um, pesticides and things like that. And I said, when I have my big garden, I'm going to grow organically. And it just hit me one day, if I am not faithful in a small garden, I'm never gonna be faithful in a large garden. So I took it upon myself to go ahead and learn organic gardening, that it's gonna be so much easier to learn it on a small scale than it is on a large scale. My expenses would be less, uh, my mistakes and failures would cost me a lot less than it would on a large scale farm. So I'm here to encourage you today from the word of the Lord that um, small beginnings are nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, we all started out as a little baby and even as a Christian, we start out as a little baby. Let's just take a look at a couple more Bible verses about little things. We're gonna to go to Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 16 says, 
Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Next, we'll go to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 8. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. So just some words of wisdom about little things. There's a negative aspect to little things, of course, in the scripture as well. And we can see that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 9. Galatians 5, 9 says, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. In the Bible, leaven is sin. And so Paul is saying that if you allow just a little bit of sin into your life or into your family or into your church, it will corrupt the whole organization. So sin must be dealt with early on and quickly. We must learn to deal with it in our life, that when we do sin, and we all do, that we'll go to God with that. First of all, tell him, thank you so much for forgiving us already, uh, for we know that he died for our sins, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day, so that we could be justified, so we could be reconciled to him. The provision has been made to cover our sins already, so we need not be so grieved that we don't go to God with the truth, but go to God and say, thank you for forgiving me. I'm sorry that I did this thing. Strengthen me on the inside with your word so that I can be faithful to you. And so I alluded to just a moment ago about being a babe in Christ. When a person is newly saved, first trust in Christ. They are a babe in Christ. And a babe should spend a little time with milk, the milk of the Word of God. It's 1 Peter 2.2 2 that says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that ye may grow thereby. So as a baby needs to drink milk several times a day, it's a good idea for our new believer to go to the Word of God a few times a day and read that you may grow thereby. The Bible is a big book and it's somewhat intimidating because of its size and because of its style of writing, but you can tackle it a little bit at a time I always encourage new Christians to begin in the book of Romans where Paul lays down the foundation of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. And if you read three chapters of the Apostle Paul's writings every day, you will read through all of his writings in a month. It's a good practice. If you're unfamiliar with the Apostle Paul's writings, they can be found beginning in the book of Romans all the way through the last letter that he wrote, which is Philemon. And we know that Paul wrote these because the first word in every one of those letters is Paul. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 17, we read the salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so I write. He tells us here in the Word of God that he writes a salutation in all the letters that he writes. So you take some time and check that out for yourself. That if you're a new believer, if you're a babe in Christ, I encourage you to begin here. It'll help you grow. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.